about two years ago I was here in this park on this exact spot at that time to tell you about this newly launched SV225 Aldaz manual mount from Zerboni. Well recently they launched a mini version of it. So today I'm going to compare and contrast the two. I'm JP Astro Guy. Thanks for joining me here at Astrophotography Japan. Through long exposure astrophotography, the beauty of the universe can be revealed in incredible ways. But it is always a thrill to gaze down an eyepiece to see visible celestial objects with our own eyes. Some of us even have specific telescopes exactly for this purpose. Of course, to hold the telescope steady and secure and to maneuver it incrementally to follow the sky as it passes overhead requires a good automated or manual mount. The SV225 Mini Alt Azimuth Mount is Viboni's newest equipment designed for this purpose. When you receive the mount, it arrives like this, unassembled in a sturdy and well padded cardboard box. Inside, the components are nicely packed and protected by thick styrofoam. There is a shiny and hard white finish on the mount component surfaces, giving it a glossy finish and the promise of durability. The finish is exactly the same as on the original SV225 full-size alt azimuth mount launched nearly two years ago. The package includes the parts shown here on this image that I borrowed from the Zviboni web pages. Everything is very similar to the original model, only miniaturized, with the main exception being the slow motion movement control arms, which I will discuss in more detail in a moment. On the left of this photo, is the original model and the new mini model, vertically assembled and shown side by side. I own both of these mounts. The new mini version was recently sent to me by Zerboni for the purpose of this product review, and in the interest of disclosure, I am not required to return it. However, Zerboni did not have any input into the content or comments provided by me in this video. The first thing that, of course, you notice about these two mounts is the size difference. The original large SV225 weighs about 3.5 kilograms. The smaller is only about 1.5 kilograms. The larger one has a payload capacity of 10 kilograms, whereas the smaller mini version can handle up to 5 kilograms of payload capacity. The larger version also has this bar which is a convenient way of moving it around in the altitude position where you don't have to touch the telescope itself. But the smaller version does not have that bar. In addition to that, there's kind of three locking screws for your telescope on the larger one and only two on the smaller one. But they both handle the standard Vixen bar for your telescope. This is a close-up look at the connection point of the slow motion movement control arms on the original SV225 Altaz mount. I believe the company has recognized that this may be the only weak link in an otherwise excellent product design. This thumb screw secured connection can become a bit annoying because it sometimes has a tendency to loosen up during usage in the field, requiring one to frequently retighten it. When it becomes loose, it has the same feeling as backlash in a gear mechanism. Initial rotational movement seems to slip until the brass worm gear and the control arm internal walls interact and then the mount mechanism turns. It is not technically a problem, just an annoyance. This is the redesigned interface of the slow motion movement control arms on the new SV225 Mini Alt Azimuth mount. The shape of the worm gear brass rod and the fit into the flexible control arm is better designed. Of course, like me, you might be wondering if the new control arms can actually be used on the original SV225 mount. Of course, I checked. But you can notice here that the tips of the brass worm gear have slightly different shapes. The original model has a little elevated section on the tip, but the mini model has a completely flat edge. So although the mini movement control arm 
fits on the original model, it is not secure nor a straight fit. It is not aligned properly to be functional. So if you look at the new mini mount, the shape of this is a little bit different and this control rod actually has kind of like a half moon sort of shape to it. So that fits directly over the top of that brass protrusion and then you can tighten it with an allen wrench and get a very secure connection. This then looks like it's never really going to loosen up because of that fitted shape and that little uh, Allen screw there. So I consider this a very good improvement over the prior version. Now let's consider the implication of the size difference between the two mounts. Where this becomes important is the amount of clearance you have from the Vixen bar down to the top gear plate of the azimuth drive where it is secured to the tripod. Notice here that with the mini version there is 10 centimeters from the Vixen clamp to the mount floor whereas there are 16.5 centimeters of space on the original larger model. So if you want to know whether your telescope will fit into the mini mount Measure the vertical distance from the bottom narrow edge of your Vixen bar down to the side of the barrel of the telescope. And basically you are measuring across the width of your telescope body. If that width is too fat, then the scope may impact the azimuth gear plate and become restricted in movement. Now, if you are an astronomer, most of you will not be using the mount in this vertical configuration. You will be using it like this, so you have better access to targets high in the sky. Notice here there is even less space if you want to use the mounts in this configuration. There is only 5.7 centimeters of working space available to accommodate your telescope. So wide body scopes like Maxitoff or Cassegrain scopes may not be suitable for the mini mount. You will need to check those dimensions prior to purchase. My visual use telescope is this the SV48P refractor. So this is the SV48P refractor telescope from Zervoni. I bought it over two years ago. It's the original model. Uh, but you can see I modified it up quite a bit with some new rings here, some plates, a finder scope, and I've got a laser pointer back here. It fits very nicely into this SV225 Mini Altaz mount. The control mechanism, the smoothness of this is really nice. There's good clearance between the bottom of the scope and the top of this uh, mount over here on the tripod. You can raise this altitude all the way up to almost to the zenith, probably 85 degrees. At this moment, I was a bit surprised that I encountered my telescope focuser impacting against the azimuth control arm and prohibiting it from going fully vertical. A bit later, while using this setup during night viewing, I figured out how to avoid this issue. So hang in there. I really like the feel of this, the size of this. I think I'll probably end up using this mini mount more than the original version just because it's got some improved features and it's lighter weight to carry around and it works fine with this scope. I weighed this out before I came it's about four kilograms in total weight so it's well within the capacity of this Altaz mount. And as you can see I even have it on the SV225T tripod from Zerboni as well. I got to thinking if the azimuth control handle interferes with positioning my telescope to point at the zenith, perhaps I could just rotate that slow motion movement control arm out further to the left, perpendicular to the body of the scope. Similar to the design of the original SV225 mount, if you unscrew and remove that perpendicular arm, beneath it are a roundabout series of holes designed to reposition the arm into eight possible different positions. 
in the original larger SV225 model, you can take advantage of all possible eight positions. I showed this on my prior SV225 reset and repair video, episode 38. Feel free to review that if you like. But what I found with this mini version is that it does not have the same flexibility. You cannot take advantage of all positions because of some structural inhibition. The arrows here point to a design restriction beyond which some of the positions are blocked from making a secure flat connection. Basically, you cannot rotate that perpendicular arm beyond the brass worm gear housing. This is very strange. I think it was probably just an oversight in the physical design of the unit. Otherwise, why would you provide eight screw positions if several of them can never be used? Regardless, it is not a big deal at all, as you will soon see. Miniature designs of anything create tight spaces. I think if the azimuth slow motion control rod was about twice as long, the handle would not encounter the SV48P telescope body when it pointed vertically. And maybe smaller telescopes would not encounter any issues at all. I did find a way around this issue on my first night of viewing, and I will soon explain it. But believe me, I love this combination, the SV225 Mini and the SV48P Telescope. Here is a chart also borrowed from the Sviboni website. A lot of this we talked about already, but these are the specs listed out for you to review. At the bottom of the chart, it mentions something referred to as itinerary structure. What a strange term but it details a slight change in the worm gear design with the Mini having less actual teeth. I suspect this will result in a bit more azimuth rotation per spin of the control rod, that meaning less finer movement control than the larger original model. But its silky smooth control has an almost hydraulic-like feel to it. It is very nice. Under the heading Precision, the comments on Backlash are a bit harder to understand. So I consulted with Sviboni Technical Service, and their explanation was rather simple. They said, and I quote, The internal structure of the two mounts is the same. The mini version just has smaller gears. Smaller means more stable and accurate. But I think the better designed control arm interface also contributes to a perceived reduction in backlash as well. I can attest that the movement control is very responsive with no delay. Changing of directions has an instantaneous response. So in the early morning hours of July 21st, I had the opportunity to bring out my gear for some visual astronomy under the stars. There was a crescent moon rising after midnight and several planets were out from 1 a.m. to dawn. Pleiades was occulted by the moon only about 36 hours earlier, which was visible on the east coast time zones in the USA, but unfortunately not in Japan. However, it was still very close to the moon. At one point, I challenged the ability of the amount to view the stars at the zenith as you can see here. The clearance of the telescope away from the Zviboni tripod was adequate, and the setup appeared to be very stable. As described previously, I encountered some interference of the azimuth movement control arm, but found that if I repositioned the telescope with the Vixen bar clamped exactly right, I could straddle the control arm with the focuser below it and the ring clamp above it. This positioning enabled me to achieve a full 90 degrees of altitude. Problem solved. And you can see that there's just the right amount of clearance for this even when using some larger uh, customized rings I put on this. But it's no problem whatsoever, even going all the way up uh, to the zenith, we can get a clear view straight up. Of course, this uh, tripod is very low to the ground, so you really need to have a stool in order to really utilize it. And even then, sometimes for high up at the zenith, it's quite low. A 
someone mentioned in the comments of one of my videos that it was possible to use the Skywatcher pier extension here on top of the SV225T tripod. And so that's what I've done here and I've put the 225 mini mount on top of that and you can see it's actually quite nice. It raises it to a very reasonable level. I would just say be a little bit careful because I think the spread on the tripod legs is not really designed for something this high so there might be a little bit of instability if you've got your weight off center here so just be a little careful but overall I think it works perfectly fine You can see in this video I was struggling a bit to find the fine movement control arms and clutch release knobs. My mind was accustomed to the longer arms of the original SV225 model, so I had to reach around and look for the shorter control knobs. But actually, I like the shorter control arms better. They are less cumbersome to pack and transport. It will probably take a few uses to get accustomed to this new mini mount design. I also tested the Zviboni MK105 Maxitoff telescope on the new mini mount. It fits fine, so I assume the MK90 fits as well. But unfortunately, I do not own the new MK127. You will have to measure and or determine that by yourself. The use of the Skywatcher AZ GTI Pure Extension actually worked better than I thought. I am sure that Zviboni would not recommend it because it adds a little risky instability, but I found it to be just fine. The added height was more comfortable for adult viewers compared to seated viewing, which really is a requirement when using the SV225T tripod directly. This was a nice late night viewing experience, and especially so since it suggested the rainy season was now ending in Japan. Oh, by the way, very late around 3.30 a.m., I was surprised by a small group of university students that happened by. They were very polite and very excited to observe a few objects in the telescope, including the Moon and Saturn for the first time. They also kindly helped me carry my equipment down the hill as the dawn light was arriving. I'm not sure exactly why the young ladies were hiding their faces when I snapped this photo, but it was kind of cute. Thanks for joining me on this product review of the SV225 Mini Alt Azimuth Manual Mount from Zverboni. I hope I answered most of the questions you had in your mind and gave you enough information to make an informed purchase decision. And if you decide to buy the mount, please use the affiliate link provided in the notes below the video. I actually made three YouTube videos on the previous full-sized mount. They are available resources if you want to deeper dive into the original model. And much of that applies to this new mini model as well, since the engineering is nearly identical. I put the URL links in the notes below this video. Well, as you may know, my name is Paul Cheesegel, and I live in Yokohama, Japan. I use the moniker JP Astro Guy. Feel free to connect with me directly if you like. My contact information is provided here. I read and respond to all comments and hope you like and subscribe. I want to thank you sincerely for watching Astrophotography Japan. Clear skies.